It's Brian Preston, the money guy. I want to talk about how we minimize volatility, the anxiety yep. when you approach retirement. Because here's the thing I tell people who, because we get calls from people who are seven years, 10 years, even people that want to, these fire movement individuals that are maybe even 15 years from, but they want to really save. I said, the thing you have to think about when you go through this, this transition period is that right now, if something happens in the stock market, you have this internal coping mechanism where you just say, no problem, I'll just work a few more years. Yeah. All right? And you even, because you didn't you add an extra year? Yeah. You added an yeah. extra year. I, what caused that? I'll tell you, there, there were really two things that drove that. One was um, I had a wise uncle who retired young, 55, same age as me, ironically. And I was, I was at a wedding with was him. Was that Carl? No, a different okay. car. Yeah, you didn't read my stuff. I'm impressed. Um, different uncle, but uh, his is a good story, isn't okay. it? Carl? Yeah. Um, but but he had told me, and this was probably ten years ago. And I'd say, yeah, I'm thinking maybe try to retire a little bit early. You know, very early thoughts of it. And he goes, just let me give you one piece of advice. He said, once you leave, you're going to be at your peak earning years, and and your skill set, your your Rolodex, the value of your contacts depreciates really quickly. So if you're not quite sure. Put in the one extra year because mm-hmm. you'll to, to replace that amount of income doing side hustles or trying to go back to work as a consultant. It could be a decade it could say, it could, one yeah, year. versus one year. So yeah. that was number one. Number two was a friend of mine who retired a year before me, and he was debating going back and forth. And I told him what my uncle said, yeah. and he decided to work one more year. And after he retired, he said, Fritz, he said, that was that was the best advice I've ever gotten. He said, we don't have to worry about a thing because we knew we were ready a year ago. Right. Now we're super ready. Well, especially so, if you have a year like 2017 exactly. where the financial markets did well. Yeah. I mean, exactly. it really padded things yeah. up, so, I'm so sure. I, I think part of how you reduce the concern about volatility is if you're not quite sure, hey, tough it out for another year. Measure because twice, that, cut once. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can't put the board back together. Yeah. And and that, that I think, is, is one of the big things to do. I think the other thing that we've done, which is we really don't worry about volatility. I, I'm a big fan of the bucket strategy. Mm-hmm. You know, you got one bucket one is kind of liquid cash and, and I'm conservative. You know, right. I, I think stocks are overvalued and things like that. Do you keep now be careful we, we know, don't you give financial talk, you we don't give, this, give investment yes, advice sorry, yes, specifically yes. on the show, but do you um how much cash? I mean, because we yep. talk about cash management all the time, yeah. And and I'm going to get into even more numbers in a minute. But we tell people when you hit retired status, you know, six three to six months is standard for most people. Yep. But then when you are in retirement, we tell people it could be 18 months, it could be 36 yep. months. Yep. Where, where, where do you? We're fall? we're slightly over three years of cash. Okay, so you're okay. even higher than yeah. 36 yeah. months. That's great. Though. I love I'm that conservative. Yeah. yeah, I'm conservative, yeah. and and I know if a downturn comes. I won't have to sell any equities for three years. And now you wouldn't want to go to zero, right? But then even then you look at a diversified portfolio. Again, I know you can't talk about this stuff, but with a diversified portfolio, the chances of all of it being down at once are pretty low. So even after the, the three-year cash bucket is emptied, realistically, you're probably going to have something else in that three-year period that you can siphon a little right. bit off of to refill bucket one. One year before retirement versus now being in retirement, because you're we're, we're over 36 months, over three years, if I'd have fat, gone a year before you, you, when you worked that full extra year, yeah. was it still over three years, or was no. that the year you built we, it up? We really? built it up. We we sold some stocks. Markets were pretty good. We yeah. decided to take a little bit off the table. Um, all the bonuses, things like that, any extra income I got, all went into bucket one. See, that's um, why that's yeah. another benefit of that extra. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to work an extra year. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying there is a benefit if you're getting close to that that gateway, and you don't have the extra cash, and you have to do apple cart turnover to get it, that probably shored you up in a yeah. lot of ways, yeah. including yeah. the liquidity. Yeah. And, and and the benefit of that is when you do get into retirement and you know you can't go back to work easily to replace that income, you don't have to worry about it as much because you've got that that insurance. You know? Sure. So that that's the biggest way I, I would say that we've you know gotten over the volatility concern. I want to talk about some numbers um, or at least some benchmarks because look, we want to respect Fritz's privacy and the fact that you've done very well, but we're not going to give actual net worth numbers or anything sure. like that. But I think it would be helpful withdrawal rate. Yeah. What um I mean, did you use when you tried to figure out if you had enough or what's your number? Yeah. Did you base that off of withdrawal rate? Did you base that off of a net worth number? Or did you base that off some calculation that you had found out there on the internet? Or, or, yeah. or how did you figure out that you had enough? Was I supposed to figure something out? No, I just got it out. I, just, I, no. come, I know no. you had this yeah. stuff figured yeah. out. Yeah, no, I, I think, mm-hmm. you know, everybody says, what's your number? The number is irrelevant. What matters is cash flow, right? And what type of 
predictable, safe income stream can you generate from your investments? And as you, if you haven't picked it up now, I'm, I'm pretty conservative. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the old rule of thumb was 4% safe withdrawal right now. Everybody's, eh, you know, big earn. I don't know if you guys follow him, but he, he did a 23-part series on recalculating. And he came out to about 3 and a quarter percent. It's okay. I think for fire, withdrawal. is he a fire person? He's a, he, he's, he's, he retired. I think he's late 40s. Yeah, yeah I can say he's definitely yeah, a fire. Yeah. So, you know, the younger you are, and 55 is young, yeah. right, the lower that safe withdrawal rate exactly. needs to be. So, so we tried to, we really focused on, and, and I've tracked my net worth. Matter of fact, you talk about the giveaway. I'll, huh. I'll, I'll give you a little tease. Um, we tracked net worth for years. And at the bottom of my net worth, I break out all of the non-retirement funding assets, mm-hmm. the home, equity, yep. the cars, things that you can't use to fund a retirement. And I've tracked that for the last five years at various safe withdrawal rates. Yeah. So I could look as each year went by, how much am I increasing my annual paycheck yeah. using different safe withdrawal rates? And it was all driven by the safest withdrawal rate we could get to get the income. So we, we try to keep it below, you know, three and a quarter. We talk about doing the annual net worth statement constantly. Yeah. Um, did you get that from us or are you already doing that? Was, was that an out of Sorry, I was trying oh, to see where you And I was trying to see if that was an echo from the no, money guy because. No. You were probably like, still in high school when I started doing that. Come network. on now. <laughs> 1992. That's when I started my net worth. Got him. I just left high school. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's, for all of you out there listening, this is, this is a reason that I really think uh, if you've never joined us for our live stream. So right now we're recording this live. We've got a bunch of folks in here in the chat. Uh, the beautiful part about watching the live stream is you can ask questions. I mean, and, and, and I want to, Jessica, Jessica Torres just asked a fantastic question Good. that ties in really well that I think is going to add a lot of value. And her question was, uh, when you were saving, how did you? Hi, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. How is that your sister? <laughs> no, no, but I know Jessica. It cracks me up. I had no idea how, she'd be out there. How did you think about when you were saving the different buckets you were saving from? Yeah. And like now as you're in retirement and you're obviously having to pull in, pull from these different buckets yeah. of retirement income, how did you think about accumulating the different buckets yeah. of retirement that income? That is a good question. That's a, it's That's a, a great good question. question. So Jessica, basically, and, and I wrote a post about this. If you look up the, I think it's uh, how to create a retirement paycheck. Mm. Just Google that on my site and you'll find it. But basically, um, I've, I've designated, on our net worth statement, we've got the various holdings that we have. Okay. And I tied each one of those into the respective bucket. Mm-hmm. So I could look at any given point in time, and I knew, you know, bucket one, I was aiming for three years. Bucket two, I was aiming for the next five years. And then bucket three was anything longer than eight years. So basically, bucket two is primarily bonds, you know, safer. So these are things. these are segregated by risk, essentially, yeah, it sounds I mean, yeah, like. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I, what I could do is as I got closer to retirement and as I updated my, I only do my net worth once a year. I don't think it, it makes a lot of sense to look at it more frequently. Did that, we're, we're in the same yeah. So same every vote. year I'd, I'd update it and I would look at, okay, where are my buckets? And depending on where I was at, primarily bucket one, obviously, and bucket two, because those are the ones that have targets. Bucket three is everything else. Um, if I was finding myself, let's say, bucket two, and I was aiming for five years, and I only had two years, I better look at my asset allocation, maybe either sell some equities, move it into bonds, or maybe just take next year's um, contributions and, and shift it towards bonds. And I kind of did that over probably a two- or three-year period to yeah. kind of adjust the buckets to where I was targeting. And then bucket one, I hit really hard the last year. We're totally you throwing you off the cuff here, but one of the things okay. we talk about all the time on the show is tax location, you know, yep. because oh, we yeah. have yep. we have your taxable yep. accounts, yep. you have your tax deferred, and yep. you have your tax free, yep. which are Roth assets. Absolutely. It's very easy for somebody who's approaching retirement to get a ton of tax deferred because you yep. get the company match from your employer. Plus, you, you've probably been, because we only recently had in the last decade or so had Roth, you know, qualified plans. Yep. But so you probably had a lot more did. tax deferred. Yep. Did you think about tax location Absolutely. or that when Absolutely. you were doing this? I, I would say that wasn't that wasn't the one oh one level. That was as right. I got more into this. You know, I've been writing for three years and I and I've always I've been a thirty year personal finance hobbyist, I call myself. That didn't really hit my I might have heard it on your show. <laughs> we really are bro. kindred <laughs> personal spirits. Personal finance <laughs> hobbyist. I like that. Not, not a beauty <laughs> but a hobbyist. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll tell you something, two things I would encourage people and I'm not giving advice, um, et cetera, et cetera. But with the new tax law right now, and the especially if you're married, single people didn't get the break, but if you're married, the marginal tax rates, are they've pushed them out so far. We're actually going to look at doing some before-tax rollovers. Now that my income's dropped in retirement, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the marginal tax brackets are so far out that, and still at 25%. You're talking about doing a conversion? Do a, do Roth doing a Roth conversion yeah. strategy. I'm going to do yeah. some Roth conversions now so that, so that I reduce my RMD risk. Yeah, that's later, right. You know? that's right. So so two things. One is that, you know, look at right after you retire, start doing some conversions before you have to, especially in the current tax law environment. Mm-hmm. Talk to your CPA before making any decisions. Um, number two is in my final couple of years of work, because I was out of kilter, right? My 
first 20 years of retire of, of work was all before tax. All mm -hmm. the company matches right. before tax. Yeah. So even though it might not have made the most sense from a marginal tax perspective, I was slamming the Roth yeah. the last couple yeah. of years just to get that diversification before sure, I retired. Sure. Yep. Everything I was saving, you know, we talked about the 40% mm -hmm. until you max out. But then I was doing the mega backdoor conversions, right? Yeah. I was doing every trick I could come up yeah. with. Yeah. Doing the after-tax contributions, the 401k. We don't call them over. backdoor conversions here. We call okay. them making traditional IRA contributions and then... Separately, converting those okay. traditional yeah, that, IRA that contributions I, into <laughs> quit. Okay. I see you glaring at me. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Though. So, yes. And then mega. I like the mega because you're using the after tax. But. So definitely tax diversification is, is a big factor. And that continues after retirement, obviously, because you can, you can minimize your RMD exposure up until you're 70 and a half. Right? By, you, by the way, start adjusting it we don't pitch what we do in our day job a sure. ton, but if you want to know what we do for a lot of our fire clients is exactly what you're talking about with those Roth conversion That's strategies. Right. So when you retire, say 50 to 70 years old, because at 70 and a half, they make, the government makes you start <laughs> pulling those qualified accounts, not necessarily your Roth accounts, but definitely all of your, your, your 401ks, 403bs, rollover IRAs, they're going to start making you take them over your life expectancy. Right, right. So from, you know, anybody who retires before them, we try to figure out how we can do a strategy to max out those lower tax rates. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I feel like I have to put that out there because you, a lot of you fire people are do-it-yourselfers, but even Fritz is like, talk to your accountant or your financial yes. advisor. Yeah, of course. And yeah. Um, you, you can figure those you things know, out. I know a couple of good ones, by the way. If you, <laughs> <Yeah. it's> kinda... <laughs> you said something beautiful, and I just think this is a point worth driving home. Financial planning is incredibly important up to retirement, but it doesn't stop. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of planning that even takes place post retirement yeah. and strategy you can implement. So it's an it's an an ongoing process, yeah. is what I'm hearing you yeah. say. Yeah, but it changes from growing the nest egg to managing the withdrawal. Yeah, right. That's right. It's a totally different strategy. I, I wrote a, a whole post about our retirement withdrawal strategy, and you need to spend some time either with a good you know financial planner or I mean this is this is dangerous stuff. You got to get sure. it right. Yeah. Yep. But you know everybody focuses on the accumulation. The withdrawal piece is equally important, and Agreed. people don't tend to talk about that's it as right. much. And, that, and that's, a, that's a big part of retirement planning. That's exactly right. Is Because uh, one of the things I want to make sure we covered, because you hear, you even alluded to it. I don't know, you know, because nobody knows. None of us have the crystal ball to know when the next downturn's coming. Um, but it, it is, you wrote November a post. 17th. <laughs> <laughs> You're selling a newsletter, too, right? That's what I always when People can give you a date. They yeah. usually have a pitch for a newsletter a right days. afterwards. But what did you, what safeguards, is it just that bucket system that you mentioned, but what safeguards do you have for the next downturn that, that could yeah. happen? Number one is primarily the or when system. it will happen, yeah, I yeah. should say. I, I think number one is you know the, the bucket system, obviously, and, and it will happen, right? Yeah. We know it'll happen. Yeah. Just sure. on the when, how long, and how severe, unfortunately. Um, but that's number one. I think number two is as we looked at our living expenses and calculated the safe withdrawal rate, as I mentioned briefly earlier, that had wants and needs. Yeah. We could we could easily cut down our spending. And I think most people rationally would do that, right? If you see your portfolio taking a real hit, you would stop doing some of the the, the wants, right? You'd focus on the needs. And, and I think we've built enough cushion in our living expenses that we could reduce that if we had to, if, if we were getting nervous, the bucket one was so getting So you based most like of these decisions, your, your insurance, were really off of the cash flow side of your of your expenditures. Absolutely. You know, that's how you yeah. backed into knowing you had enough, mm -hmm. which is unique because, you know, you do see people, and it, it's important to have the balance sheet too. You do, I, know, I know you said that you'd never base it off of the size of your net worth, but it's very cool that you did it off cash flow because yeah. that is at the end of the day that is what you're living off right. of, yeah. and the the balance sheet and the assets you have to support that all it's all married and Absolutely. cumulative. So yeah. that, that's awesome. Um, I want to talk about some fun stuff. Okay. Hold on. Uh, this isn't fun. You mean withdrawal rates and Roth conversion <laughs> strategies in order to buy down you see the RFDs? Oh, <laughs> we went through the good feel of the transition. Then we got into some nerdy stuff. We're trying to make this good for everybody. I saw, now, I, I, it looked like because of the view that they had on the website that you posted, you are you have a pull-behind trailer, a camper. Correct. And um, I'm, sure, I'm assuming that was like one of their... their their setup stage views because of the mountain. Was that your no, picture? No, that was, that was my picture. Yeah, that was, in the mountain. That was in like Tennessee. That? that wasn't too far from here. Yeah. So that's your yeah. actual setup yeah. with the TV, that was my the truck. couch. Yeah. With, it looks yeah. like those were reclining yeah. chairs. Yeah. 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 You heard, you heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. Fritz's setup is good enough to be on the brochure. That's what Brian just described. <laughs> well, I thought it was you. a brochure picture. I'm not gonna lie. But here's the thing. I I'm not a camper. 
Yeah. It looks, that sounds miserable to me. It just it when does I not think sound about rugged wilderness man. <laughs> Brian Preston is what comes. But, to but here's the thing: after seeing Fritz's pull behind, I could do that. that that's clamping. It's, you know, it's it's a comfortable. Isn't that, way, isn't that what they call it? Yeah, glamping, yeah, clamping, <laughs> clamping. Yeah, gl- glamorous camping. Um, you know, and I think this goes back to that mini retirement and thinking about what you want to do. And I think. Um, one of the things that we agreed we wanted to do was be able to do some slow travel. We've camped, you know, I, both my wife and I camped when we were kids, and we kind of yeah. have this theory that if you camp as kids, you probably didn't camp as a kid. No, no, I have the actual oh. opposite story. I was oh, no. a wee below stu- <laughs> transitioning from Cub Scouts to Boy Scouts. We went on a camping trip. The tent that I you know this because I've told you the story a gazillion times. The tent I slept in with like four other people. These were old donated Korean War tents. <laughs> and we were in the Appalachian Mountains. It snowed. A huge snowstorm hit. And there was a hole above <laughs> it, me in the tent. And my... I, See, that's my, why you don't my parents, no, my parents did not prepare me for this trip. I go up there with this cloth, you know, sleeping bag that I probably had been using for sleepovers and everything else. It got soaking wet. I, I really thought I had frostbite on my legs, my feet, and, and it just, I have been traumatized ever since. I am, you know, not only am I precious about closing the trunk lid of right, my Tesla, right. I'm precious about not wanting to be cold and wet outside in the Appalachian well, Mountains. I, okay, so there, I'll, I'll modify my theory. You've either never camped or the one time you camped in weed blows it was a miserable experience that's my new theory okay <laughs> Ruined yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. But, but regardless i think you know the point being identify those things you want to do and and plan to to put the places in you know the pieces in place sure. and and ideally do that while you're still working so that when you hit retirement you've kind of got your toys right and that was that well, was one of the things I, br- I brought up the do. toys not just to brag on you but i want to talk about because it is how do you transition how do you flip that switch we teased on this in the intro and the fact that yep. you save <clears throat> save 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 you it's this mentality of being a builder an empire builder and then you get to retirement and now all of a sudden you're supposed to go buy campers you're supposed to go buy mountain bikes you're supposed to go travel a bunch that's got to play crazy mind tricks on you so how did how did you is there a process is there a system how did you do it how did you transition that's that's a that's a good question and and i'll I'll quote kind of butcher a dave ramsey quote but i I wrote a post about it. It, it, it 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 hit me, and it, he's and a neighbor of ours. Okay, around yeah, here, that's so right. That's fine. You, hey, can, you, can, you can love on um, Dave. Yeah, he, that's him right over there. That's right. Is he waiting for you? Live studio. Uh, okay. I wish Dave was hanging but, out in the studio audience. Um, it would help us. But, but you know, one of, one of the things I thought about my wife and I as we prepared for retirement, you spend thirty years working to get there, right? Mm-hmm. And if you think about the Dave Ramsey quote, "Live like no one else, so later you can live like no one else." That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most people tend to focus on the first half of that sentence. Yeah. Right. Live like no one else. Save, save, save. Yeah. Don't forget the second half of the sentence, right? Yeah, why the fun are you, part why of the are you doing this? Yeah. You're doing this so that when you retire or later in life, you can live like no one else. And and that kind of triggered in me, we're not going to have to worry about money. We know we're in decent shape. We've got a safe withdrawal rate. Let's just, we've saved for 33 years. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And and we, we were intentional and we kind of con- made a conscious yeah. decision because your natural tendency, and most people, if you read the stats, most people underspend in retirement, mm-hmm. and their portfolios get, you know, they continue to grow, sure. and people are underspending what they could. Now, you sure. got to be careful. No. You can't go no, crazy. It's, it's right? you got to have a plan. But I think going into retirement, knowing that that saving is, you, you've done the heavy lifting, it's time to live like no one else. Yeah. And, and we made that conscious decision to to kind of let ourselves have some fun. We knew we had enough in there. We knew we were good. We had our, our targeted starting points, right? Bucket right. one, bucket two, bucket three. Mm-hmm. And anything that we could kind of afford to divert to toys and still hit that starting point don't forget we sold the big house yeah. you know we had some equity so we could use some of that we we were able to to use that to kind of position ourselves to not have to worry about it as much in retirement and and i think that's kind of how we went about it so even though you said you didn't have like a number like you know of assets since you are backing into that number i'm reverse engineering your system yep. essentially yep. since you knew the number you wanted to be able to have to live off of from a cash flow perspective and then you knew the withdrawal rate that you were going to go with. You kind of knew what part of your assets you needed to cord off yep. and keep that protected. That's your principle that, hey, this is my, I'm retired, I have enough. But And, and not that you spent everything that was above and beyond that, right. but that probably gave you the freedom exactly. to feel like, hey, I could go. Because I'm sure there's some upgrades on that. That pull behind, yeah. based upon yeah. what I saw, it looked like it had a few. Because I mean, I, didn't it, did it have a kitchen island? Yeah, I mean, it has a kitchen island. I mean, this thing. What it, what, the picture do doesn't that. even show the bedroom. I could see there was a step up, yeah. and I'm like, 
It's almost like one of those Looney Tune things where they threw out a cube and you go inside. You know, it's it's teeny tiny on the outside, and then you go inside, and it looked a lot bigger on the inside than I was expecting. Hey, so Bo, he's he's thinking about camping. How about to say I can hear that? The wheels are turning. The wheels are turning. No, to, to your point though, I think what we, one of the things we did, we kind of yeah, it's just numbers, right? It's just yeah. math. You can look at a withdrawal rate. You can look at net net worth. It's all the same number. It's just a matter of what, which way you interpret it. But one of the things we did, probably two or three years out, we kind of knew, okay, here's where we want to be. And so I kind of called that our starting position. So here's our starting target. And I kind of built a little bit of a cash flow model where between now, this was two years prior to retirement, and retirement day one, Mm -hmm. here's the things I think are going to happen that are going to bring cash in, and here's the things we'd like to do that are going to take cash out. Mm -hmm. And we we were able to kind of, you know, okay, here's the fifth wheel. We had a line item for it, and we knew, okay, the bonus is going to come in, et cetera. You know, different things like that. We're going to sell the house. How much net worth we're going to – or how much net equity we're going to have? How much do we need to pay off the other cabin? How do we look in our buckets? You know, and we could kind of target a starting cash position. And 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 get there by looking at inflows and outflows between sure. now and retirement. That's sure. that's how we did it. Sure. I, I know you said you're not an engineer, but you are <laughs> wired. You are wired a lot <laughs> like us. Okay. It's, it's pretty. You awesome. called me a nerd earlier. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. All right. Let me. So here, let me ask one other question. I think this this is. Uh, I think this is great. And again, this is directly from our live audience right now. But you you said you kind of thought through everything. Well, one of the questions, and this actually comes from T Boy, but one of the questions a lot of folks have. Uh, when it comes to retirement, and the the biggest unknown that most people are uncomfortable with is health care. Yeah. And how do you account for and how do you plan answer. for that? Yeah. That is yeah. great. Uh, and yeah. I, truthfully, I was going to save this. T boy, you, I'm not saying you're getting a Tumblr, but you may get a Tumblr for this. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, well, Brian's saying you're getting a Tumblr for this. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. We were going to save this for the Q&A, but I think this is so yep. important yep. that I want us to answer it now so that all our folks out in podcast T-Boy world, needs to stay around to the end, though, so we can give the instructions on how to get <laughs> that's a Tumblr. Right. But yeah, that's go, right. go ahead, though. So how, how so, did you think about yeah, that? How did you plan for unknown health care That is the That is the big question, Mark. And and ironically, I've got a post coming out tomorrow. Also, if you're listening now, sign up on my blog. Man, you are manifest. good at this oh, promotion thing. I, 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 I think we have promoted three or four there. posts yeah. here. <laughs> but no, but this this one is uh, um, health insurance and retirement unsolved. Okay. And okay. basically, we haven't solved it. Sure. And yet, you, I still retired. This makes right? me, because we have, this question comes up yeah. all the time, yeah. and we give it, but keep going. Okay. Right? This, so, so what we did, um, number one, um, we made an aggressive assumption, conservative <laughs> assumption on how much it was going to cost us. We knew we were going to have to go private pay. I, I do have a pension, so we weren't going to be able to qualify for any of the subsidies. Sure. So we looked at an all-in private health and care, health care, health insurance, and we said, okay, let's use 25000 a year. Mm-hmm. Just kind of grabbed a number. Okay. Um, so, you know, 2000 bucks a month, and let's inflate it faster than the general pace of inflation. I did a cash flow out to age 95, mm-hmm. and at one of the line items, health care insurance. Sure. So we, we used 25000 a year, and I inflated it 5% a year. So we kind of built that into our safe withdrawal rate number mm-hmm. and said, okay, let's assume we need to spend that. Um, so that's that's number one. You've got to account for it in your cash flow because sure. you are going to have to pay for it, yeah. and it's not cheap. That's right. Um, number two is I went with Cobra, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. you know it's it's it's, it's, it's what you got. Eighteen yeah, months costs us a thousand bucks a month. So guess what? I'm fifteen hundred bucks per month to the good, right? Sure, yeah, that's, that's right. right. So that's okay. And then so that gets me through December of nineteen. Okay. And then one more year at the end of that, my my employer used to have a retiree medical plan that they've discontinued, but they're mm-hmm. they're phasing it out. So I catch the last year of that. Okay. So I've got the first thirty months of retirement covered. Yeah. And then I'm hoping that Washington gets their act together. Washington gets their act together, which is 30 months is probably not enough, but you know, markets are efficient and we're, we're looking at health sharing. We're looking at, you know, we'll, we'll, we're continuing to evaluate it and we're just hoping with a 30 month window here that that's going to be sufficient. That's how we handle it. So I'm going to paraphrase what you said. You picked and you picked a conservative number. You think it's probably going to be less than 2000 a month. Most, Uh, most likely is that probably what you concerned. He's basing off probably some of the research we've seen of all the hundreds of thousands of dollars that cost you in retirement. Fortunately, a lot of that's back end loaded, but I think it's still marked smart to plan for it. And then I love that you inflated it. It's not like you just thought, okay, well, it's going to be two thousand dollars a month indefinitely. You actually grew it out. Right. You and did twenty five hundred actually. Yeah, right? twenty five hundred. Yeah. Well, twenty five thousand a year. So what is that? That's about two, two thousand. Grand two, two grand a month. Two grand a month. Sorry, Bo. It's like math. It's, it's, it's like you do math. I don't know. <laughs> it's actually two thousand. Uh, so I, I, I think that's great. Uh, so I, I hope what you heard in that is we don't know. Right. And anytime we don't know, you kind of have to make a best guess hypothesis, and you go with that. And the beautiful part about financial plans is if you build in enough. Cons- Conservatism, yep. you leave yourself room to adjust as circumstances yep. change. Yep. It didn't yep. derail you. And and, yep. and I will tell you, I'm always an optimist in the fact that I know we have so much bickering going on in Washington, but this is still an ongoing concern that everybody knows a concern. And I think that I have confidence that that 
we'll have something. It might not be perfect. Nothing yeah. coming out of Washington is ever perfect, but at least it will be something right. functional for, I, for you in I, retirement. I think and I hope that there's there's a solution to it. You know, one, one of the things I write in my post that's coming out tomorrow, there's plug four, um, <laughs> is that, but, you know, I've got friends of mine who say, oh, I'm not going to retire. I, you know, I, I don't have any health insurance. I'm concerned about health insurance. Yeah. To me, that, that in and of itself, you got to look at your personal situation. But if you've got the financial resources to cover it, at the end of the day, it's a number. That's right? the part that it's can a, break you. Though, now, if you're pre, not, pre-existing you conditions, things careful. like that, yeah, it's a big, mm. big deal. Yeah. But just recognize at the end of the day, it, it's kind of a number. And build it into your conservative mm. assumptions. And, you you know, is a reason to keep working? For some people, maybe. Sure. In our case, it wasn't. Yeah. Makes sense. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. That, and, and T-Boy, great. Fantastic question. Yeah. Stay more. around to the end so we can get you a, t- a tumbler, you know, find, give you the instructions. Um, I want to go ahead and transition to kind of close the show out on the, these 10 commandments of retirement that you you compiled. And remember, guys, if you have not given us your email address, because our new plan going forward, Fritz, just to catch you up, every new show we do, we're going to create some type of deliverable. And all we need is for people to give us their email address to get on our subscriber go. list. And at the end of the show, probably the following Monday, we release new shows on Friday. Now, you live streamers will have to wait approximately a week. But the following Monday, we're hoping to automatically send out a deliverable for every show. So that way, if you think I'll ramble on and go on tangents, at least you'll get some type of deliverable that's much more concise. I'm basing that off some of the troll comments I get. <laughs> I'm like, where have y'all been? I've been doing this since 2006 where we bump around walls like we do. But definitely this is going to be one of the deliverables mm-hmm. we're, we want to share with our listeners and we'll Fritz, you're welcome to, to it's your content so we yeah, want you sure. to feel like Absolutely. you can feel use it as it. well yeah. Thanks. And, and um, I, I, I want to just reiterate what you said the only way to get it the only way to get it is you have to go out to moneyguy.com subscribe give us your email address we're not going to put it on the website we want this to be something special that you have access to as a member of the money guy family so go out subscribe and you're going to get some awesome content moving forward